wonky hello friends welcome back to another episode here on the channel i hope you're all doing great as always and for anyone new to the channel my name is lee also known as osiris today we're going to continue on with our vgc series 10 content we're in the warm-up period now we're on the rundown to the rules reverting officially on the 1st of august so like i said on our previous episode what we're going to do in these next few weeks is just a look and explore a few of the archetypes common ones to start us off with and then we'll delve a little bit deeper as the weeks go on into the run-up of that rule set actually becoming official on the 1st of august so lots of content to get through um, and obviously i want to start off with the kind of the big teams the big pokemon that are more popular and going to be more centralized into the format hence why we started off with Zashin. we did uh, xerneas in our last episode and today we're going to move on to another big pokemon and that is going to be kyoga so obviously here we've got a, a very common build at the minute and it is very standard but it's standard for a good reason because i think it's important to kind of play these standard teams get you aware of them and obviously provide you with a poker piss if you want to try them out because it gets your head around how these teams are working and there are some variations obviously they're kind of the standard Kyogre that you're seeing on these teams is going to be 252 252 timid and i'm sorry like i've played for far too long i see the value in it i see the value in choice scarf but it's not my preference of how i like to play Kyogre. i do like a little bit defensive bulk in Kyogre and um, it allows us to take a few extra additional attacks I don't like being in those end game situations where your opponent playing is very tight and you get to that end game situation and you know for a fact they've got one attack on you you've got one attack on them and they're able to KO you just because you've not got that defensive bulk and you know some players can play around that because then they adapt their game plan going forward but it's just not for me I like that little bit of security behind Kyogre because it is capable of taking a lot of damage and um, you can bulk it out even further than this I've got some extremely defensive bulky Kyogres and you know with items like Mystic Water they do kind of compensate for that lack of uh, special attack investment so there are options there for Kyogre but it does come down to personal preference I'm just sorry I'm not going with the 252 in this episode but don't get me wrong there's nothing wrong with that if you're comfortable with that if you like the way that Kyogre kind of plays go for it because it works and it is so effective for so many players it's just not my preference and hence why I don't really want to play it in today's video and hopefully by you know bringing this onto the channel it kind of opens your eyes up to uh, a few different ways with how Kyogre can be played and I've done it again I'm like literally switching cameras and I'm talking into this camera and I should be talking into this one so sorry if that if the, it doesn't make sense but we'll get to it in the end anyway this is the kind of standard build that we're going to see from Kyogre you're going to have the, the the first five Pokemon on most Kyogre teams are going to be very similar you're going to have the Kyogre obviously going to be the main restricted of the team brings the rain got that water spout scald some of them are going thunder it gives you a little bit of a nicer matchup against um in particular bulky waters that can kind of otherwise wall you um but I personally don't think you need it if you game plan is correct I think with things like Serena and things like Reggie Alec you should be able to deal with those pretty well without needing to compensate for that thunder again it's down to personal preference how you believe and feel you want the Kyogre to play there are some really risque sets out there where they've got water spout ice beam and thunder I don't know if that's the most optimal because it kind of leaves you a bit locked if you're late in the game you've taken a lot of damage and you're kind of relying on that water spout that's really reduced at that point um i like scald because wide guard is flavor of the week at the minute obviously a lot of spread moves in this format you know things like mind shell hit on top stack attacker celestela all these pokemon with wide guard are popping up and causing a lot of problems for these pokemon that rely heavily on these um spread attacks and that's one thing i would say probably in this episode in particular a big important point to take away is have a look through the list on showdown of pokemon that can learn wide god so you don't get caught out by it you can kind of prepare yourself going into it expect it at least and if it's not there then it's a bit of a bonus you can use those spread attacks but just get yourself kind of swatted up on those pokemon so the kyoga like i say main center point of the team and everything else is kind of in and around there to to help support it although they're not slouches themselves you've got tornadoes kyoga 
very common uh, combination. Obviously, the, the Tornadus uh, provides the Tailwind support, which then supports the Kyogre and a lot of other things on the team. Um, in this set, you can see variations between have an Icy Wind and Protect, but the other three moves are pretty much staples with the Hurricane uh, for that stab attack. Obviously, benefits from the rain, getting that 100% accuracy there. Uh, and then Taunt to shut opposing uh, setup, opposing Trick Room down. Um, it makes it life a lot easier, especially coming off the Prankster where you're not relying on a speed stat icy wind is really nice to kind of counteract opposing tailwinds in situations of focus sash is an option there if you can't put it on the the tornadoes then things like mental herb are quite good whimsicott's popping up with taunt likes to taunt tornadoes turn one and stop you getting your tailwind up and then things snowball from there so mental herbs a nice option but i don't feel like we need it in this team especially with something like serena that can kind of come in and block those priority attacks incineroar makes a lot of sense in this team you need a fire type uh, the dark typing is really nice as well gives you intimidate big thing obviously helps out against that zashin matchup a bunch and um, so a very standard incineroar went with a little bit of a different one in this one the, the previous two episodes that we've done we've went for a very defensive kind of incineroar just to have that little bit of security against Myang Chao, but I don't feel like we necessarily need it here in this team. We'll get to a few other reasons why not later on in this in this uh, team build. Um, and then, yeah, there's not too much to say about Incineroar. It takes plus two Moonblast from um, Xerneas and can take a bunch of other attacks. It's just staying power on the field is really good. Got the Citrus Berry just for a little bit of recovery there as well. Um, and then we move on to the other star of the team, which is Serena. Seen a massive spike in usage since Series 10 kind of kicked off on Showdown. And uh, for good reason, it blocks priority attacks with its Queenly Majesty ability, uh, which is honestly, in my opinion, one of the best abilities in the game. Uh, blocks Prankster, blocks Faker, blocks Grassy Glide, all things that are going to cause this team a lot of issues because you know generally you want to fake out the tornado stop the tailwind you want to grassy glide the kyogre um and it goes on and on and on you know so you really are able to capitalize if you play this arena correctly in this team and it's such a good pokemon i've opted for the assault vest i like the 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 uh, the, the bulk that it gives you the staying power that it gives you and uh now with access to triple axel it's it's incredible it has lost faint but i think it gains so much more with triple axel than faint really ever give you you know you can get rid of um protects and you can break wide guards etc but i think the fact that you can pressure things like tornadoes now thunderous now flying types is just so invaluable and also the fact that you can pretty much knock out most rillabooms as well with the triple axel there is the drawback that it's not as accurate but again it's an it's an incredible option and i really do like it payback is a nice option to pressure uh shadow rider calyrex uh, now you could go something like u-turn here so it gives you that pivot a little bit of um a bonus when it comes to board positioning and readjusting that but I think the benefit with the Assault Vest and you can really slam on some damage on, on Shadow Rider Calyrex to kind of stop that momentum that it is able to do and really overcome the team. Because if once they can stall out the Tailwind, if they can remove the Tornadus, then things get very difficult. Whereas Serena with this can put a lot of pressure on alongside the uh, the Incineroar and a few other members of the team. Um, so yeah, Reggie Alecki here. It's going to be our main kind of counter option to those bulky waters along with Serena. Obviously provides an additional method of speed control with electro web and just with that speed stat as well it's going to be able to come in out of tailwind if it does end and just kind of be a bit of a, a cleanup crew you know uh reggie lecky amazing really good against opposing kyogres and stuff like that um so yeah generally these are the five and like we've seen uh oh what, what's his name uh, i can't remember what his name is so i do apologize but there was a kyogre build that won a big uh, online tournament over the the past few days uh same five pokemon but had shininja here over the amoongus we've seen other builds where maybe we've got rillaboom in instead of serena with the amoongus um so there are variations urshifu in there as well to give options um so we'll see variations of the kyoga builds they all play very differently uh, depending on this last pokemon in particular sometimes without the serena as well i just feel like serena just kind of ties the team together i'm a personal big fan of serena as well i played it a lot back in um, 2016 and 2019 
think it was 2019, I'm not sure. But whenever we had the last restricted format, I did love Serena. It was one of my favorite Pokemon in that format. And um, yeah, so I've opted for a Moongus here. Uh, I've been testing it out with the Rocky Helmet. I think it's incredible um, because it really punishes things like Zashin, things like Urshifu, and makes those, those Pokemon, especially the Sash sash pokemon like urshifu a lot easier to manage because you can easily hit them with like a hurricane but you take them down to the sash but then you switch into something like amoongus and they kind of KO themselves and you're not taking a lot of damage anyway and you've got the regenerator to kind of switch out and get that health back it's an incredible option we saw rocky helmet and past formats a long time ago as a popular option on amoongus uh when things like mega kangaskhan were around where you'd see the fake out into it get a lot of damage onto itself at the same time as getting a fake out and very little damage onto you so you can utilize amoongus in a nice way especially with that rage powder where you can draw in those physical attacks and make sure that the the physical targets are taking that rocky hammer damage while protecting your partner in pokemon it's an incredible option especially against things like rillaboom clear smog is great because you can come in and uh, really disrupt xerneas teams it makes dealing with xerneas so much simpler because you can spore it on the geomancy then you can clear smog it and just yeah it's it's just really straightforward but it's very effective and it gives you an option inside a trick room as well which can be otherwise a little bit problematic for this team because um we'll go back to the kyogre now because i have haven't really talked about the spread here now i did mention at the start i don't really like generally that kind of 252 252 spread and that's just personal preference like i say there's nothing wrong with that it's just down to personal preference and people will have their preferences on how they like to play kyoga so um there's some benchmarks that i wanted in particular one of them was in tailwind to outspeed regieleki with this speed stat um we can do that so we don't need to worry about regieleki when we've got the tailwind up at least we're going to be able to fire off water spot before they can attack which is good but the other thing that i wanted to do was really um take a grassy glide from a rillaboom and um, because sometimes i'm not going to be in the situation where i can get serena on the field or serena's gone down and kyoga i feel i played a lot like it is going to be like a late game pokemon i don't play it very often as an early game pokemon especially with the the kind of influx of rillaboom that we got in the format at the minute i kind of like to try and clear those pokemon out bring kyoga in at the end hopefully have some sort of speed control left in the tank or fake out support at least and then kind of use Kyogre to kind of clean the game up. Now the defense investment really helps here. It means you can take like at least like um, one grassy glide from a, what is it? Let me just double check this for us. 252 Adamant uh Rillaboom with an assault vest so if they've got the miracle seed you're gonna need the intimidate but we do have intimidate in the team to kind of help out with that to mitigate that so the raw options there um obviously again something like zashian as well um you are going to be able to let me just plug in some some attacks because behemoth blade and sacred sword are going to be your two i'm not going to include wild charge because it's not a very popular option sacred sword has um a 73 percent chance to kill and that's on plus one so if you can get it down to neutral then you're going to be able to uh, at least out damage it with skull the lawn uh to 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 beat it in that one-on-one -on -one situation so the defense investment here quite important um in particular for the the rillaboom um especially if serena isn't around but i mean if serena's around it means you can beat it outright because you can ice beam it twice before it can grassy glide to you and you're always going to be out, able to outspeed it so that is a team uh hopefully uh the the intro here wasn't too long-winded and we've went through a few variations of uh, different variations and kind of what the standard build is and as always, we'll have a couple of games of the team now. The poker paste will be down in the description as always. And if you have been playing with Kyogre and you've got your own variation, I'd love to hear about it. So do drop a comment down below. Let me know uh, about your Kyogre experiences, how you feel about it, if you like it in the format at the minute, or if you're not a huge fan, or if you just kind of not got the hang of it yet. So have a few games, see what we bump into on the ladder. And uh, as always, it's going to be a lot of fun. So what do we got here? Vikavolt, uh, Alcremie, a very good Pokemon in this format, I think. Think very underlooked at the minute pelipper uh urshifu the uh ice rider and rillaboom uh, i'm trying to think what's going on here obviously trick room here with the the um the ice rider i think is one of the big things gives us a few headaches really to be honest because um we can't taunt it it's going to be the only trick room pokemon on the team kind of tempted to lead i mean we could lead i kind of tempted to lead tornadus incineroar 
I don't know if I want to... Uh, could we bring Amoongus here just in case the Trick Room goes up? Because one of the options we could do is just allow the Trick Room to go up and then uh, let Moongus come in. But then you've got to worry about the Alcremie that stops everything kind of being put to sleep, which makes it a little bit more tricky. Um, I think we bring Kyogre to this one. And do we want Amoongus anywhere for the Rage Powder? Because it is going to be kind of useful. I think it's either that or Serena. And... Yeah, let's go for a Moongus. Let's go for a Moongus. Okay, so, um, Calyrex, we can't get the taunt off because they're going to fake us out. We can trade fake out, I guess, this turn and, and go for a taunt because I think they're primarily going to go for the Trick Room. I think they have to go for the Trick Room here with the kind of Pokemon that they've got in the back. So there's a fake out. Just going straight for that Glacial Lance, but okay. Well, that's that's all right. Um, we could go for Tailwind now. Um, I think we part and shot out into the Calyrex. It's just we don't really have the switches. It's like, do we lose Tornadus now? It's probably most likely that we do. It's going to make dealing with the, the Urshifu a little bit more tricky, of course. Um, and we could switch in Kyogre, but there's always the risk of a, a grassy glide into that slot, you know. So I think we got a Tailwind, and I think we got a Parting Shot into the Calyrex. Yeah, okay, we're going to see Vikavolt come out. Um, yeah, there's a grassy glide, so it wasn't worth risking the um, the uh, the Kyogre switch there. We we'll bring Kyogre in now. We'll be able to um, get Incineroar onto the field, and we can just. Um, I mean, they're likely going to switch the Rillaboom out here, I think. But at the same time, like, I kind of want to... Uh... I mean, the Vikavolt's minus one, right? So I think we just fake out Rillaboom and just water spout. Yeah, they're going to bring in Alcremi. Okay, and then just protect him. So we'll get some good damage onto the Alcremi. Probably knock it out. And Rillaboom's going to enter the field. Oh, we don't. That, that's actually better for us, to be honest. That is better for us. Because we can now go for a parting shot into the Vikavolt. <sighs> And water spout because that will get rid of the alcremi before it can go for a decorate so that's going to be the thing and i think the big thing for us is to try and uh keep the the um the incinero on the back so we've got that active fake out uh the active intimidate for later on in this game let's see if this gets the oh it does okay i thought it might hang on i thought it might hang on but uh no okay well one turn of tailwind left this is ideal this is ideal um because yeah we just parting shot what's about again i mean there is the thing where i'm like hmm do we just flare blitz into it because it is going to trick room probably but then is that is that a terrible thing i think getting the parting shot off into it is probably more important here really boom coming in i'm just gonna no protect though okay parting shot we'll get uh amungus back in and at least we can put that color extent to minus two zen head but okay so not the scariest of scary things so we've got a nice switch into uh incineral now the grassy terrain has actually left the field so we're in a not a bad spot where we could potentially just switch incineral back in um and protect kyoga here and then we got a clean ice beam onto that rillaboom the next turn now they're gonna okay This still works out, unless they got Trick Room here, which then, no, they're not gonna, gonna get greedy. Greedy, greedy, greedy. Uh, okay, well, we don't have the rain up anymore. Um, but I mean Incineroar in a great position where it can just, probably just Flare Blitz, knock out, and um, use Water Spout as well. Yeah, okay. We'll get rid of the Red Bull. What's the Alcremie going to do? Decorate, yeah, okay. I mean, yeah, that's that's over. Okay, very good game to my opponent. And you know what? That is a nice... It's a kind of a nice team as well to see it as well. Kind of doing so well on the ladder. So, yeah, very good. Um, We'll move on to our next one. We'll see if we can get another result. Ooh, this is a tasty team. I like this build. I like this build a lot with the Volcarona um, and the Xerneas. Obviously, we did cover a kind of similar one. This one's obviously got the Landorus in. Um... But what are we looking at? Obviously, double fake out. It's 
all over the shop at the minute. Um, rage powder is going to be a little bit difficult um, to get the tornadoes taunt onto the, uh, the Xerneas, of course. Um, and then we got the, the Regieleki to kind of contend with as well. I think what we'll do is, I think we'll go Tornadus Kyogre. Um, I think we definitely need Serena in this match. Do we want Incineroar? I kind of feel like Double Grass is probably the play here. Makes it difficult against the Volcarona, of course, but we just have to be a bit careful. Okay. Okay. Well, this is... This is... It's tempting, of course, to Tailwind. And, um... Hmm. I think we just taunt... And then we'll switch into Amoongus because, you know, they're going to be sashed the Lecky 100%. They're going to go for, uh, yeah, the Electro Web. I think, yeah. Okay, well, the next turn it's all right because we just Tailwind. And uh, we can just Spore into the Xerneas. Or we could clear Smog into it as well. You know, I don't think it's going to Geomancy though. I think it's going to switch into something. Um, might be better to almost clear smog into the Aleki just to break a sash there um tailwind and spore actually because i <sighs> yeah they switch that out that makes sense we tailwind get that up we'll get the kyogre in the next turn yeah whatever comes in i think it'll be xerneas to be honest what's oh, rilla okay that's a nice play from my opponent and we still get to actually keep um Tornadus, which is a bit of a bonus, so we can just Hurricane and switch Serena in here. And the rain kind of helping us out with the, the Incineroar at this point anyway. So if it, I mean, I'm talking about if it does Flare Blitz, of course. But uh, the Hurricane, depending on how this Rilla's kind of trained, might have a chance to take it down. May do, may not as well. So we will soon see. But this is the thing, like, as soon as they lose... Incineroar in this game like we're already able to identify if they lose Incineroar in this game They've got very little that can deal with the Amoongus and the Amoongus can just have an absolute field day. So um, We do see the Xerneas take a switch in uh, No fake out Just a taunt which is interesting. Okay, that's fine um, I think we switch into Amoongus and what are their switch-ins? I mean, we could Power Whip. I think Power Whip into Xerneas is a nice play because it gets so much damage onto it, you know? They may Parting Shot with Incineroar and protect the Xerneas, but at the same time, I'm like, I'm not super concerned about the Incineroar. You know, we haven't got Intimidate, so we can't lower its attack, but at the same time, I'm like, Amoongus is so safe, really. Yeah, we're going to see the Protector. Power Whip and potting shot yeah that's fine i mean what comes in though like rillaboom the fake out you can't fake out amoongus yeah it it makes it difficult for my opponent because i think the next turn what we can do is just if the rillaboom comes in here we can triple axle it um and we can just go well we can just spore into that xerneas really because there's no worries they, they can't stop us unless the rillaboom's got taunt which would be a little bit of a problem but I don't see it having taunt now the Incineroar coming in. So that's fine. That can take a quick nap. Ah, We don't need that. We don't need that triple axle miss. This is a, the problem with that move sometimes, you know. The thing is, though, really, my opponent's having a lot of issues with uh, with Amoongus here. Except they've got the safety goggles and they've, 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 uh, they've totally um, outdone outdone us here so we're in a little, we are in a little tricky spot so my opponent playing really well um to kind of pin us down i still think uh huh, what are they gonna do are we gonna sacrifice tornadoes i don't think so um we do need to reset i just don't want it i mean what we could do is rage powder and bring in kyoga they're not gonna Take out, I don't think. Yeah, they got Volt Switch, which is fine. And then Parting Shot, I think, as well. Rilla coming in. This just allows us. Okay, Taunt, that's fine. That's fine. Um, We could bring in Serena now, but at the same time, I don't feel like it's the play. Um, I think I've got to make a double switch, though, because I don't really want to bring in... I want to get Tornadus onto the field. That's the big thing for us. I think Clear Smog, the Boom, 
like a tornado soon. Lucky. Drum beating. Hmm. Uh, yeah, we can't we can't really switch anything out at the minute. It's not it's not ideal. We need to break the sass on a lucky tailwind. But I feel like the Alecki's just going to Volt Switch out anyway. Um, but we'll get a Tailwind up, so that does give us a little bit of an option for the next few turns. I mean, my opponent's playing it really well with this double in this double fake out. You know, this is what holds a lot of these teams together. You know, the, the, the pivoting out and playing it like super well, like with these repositioning Pokemon, just trying to carve out these little scenarios where you're able to kind of get um, a little bit of an advantage yeah and you can see my opponent doing really well with the regieleki just keeping it off the field so with this volt switch just in and out uh, so this sash that i'm assuming is there which may not be but it does make sense when you look at the team it doesn't look like there's a sash pretty much anywhere else um you turn and incineral gonna come back in a rocky helmet doing some nice work there for us of course um and if it is the incineral it kind of opens the door for us now to bring in kyoga which is which is exactly what we want because we can then switch into serena get that regenerate and reset the taunt and then get rid of the incineral and do some well probably pick up the knockout on xerneas and almost forcing the xerneas to switch out for rillaboom in that situation so it's quite difficult for my opponent, my opponent here, to uh, to kind of get the uh, the leg up at this point where we've got that tailwind. Uh, we're definitely down in numbers, but because of that U-turn, it's kind of opened the door for us to uh, to have an opportunity where we can kind of get the Kyogre into the field in the position that we wanted in, um, especially with the Serena in the back where we can really kind of take advantage of this board position that we got. And yeah, that Zernia is definitely going down this next turn. 100% as we get the Ogre in and uh, like I say, we'll switch out and just water spout and uh, the Incineroar are not going to be able to take this. Unless it's got a Pasho and it's like ridiculously bulky, but you can see the Rillaboom coming onto the field now. We've still got two turns of Tailwind in effect and we can kind of close the game up from this point and you can see now where this team really kind of has a real good uh ability to get to to just control games you know water spout we can just water spout again to be honest because um the triple axle water spout is going to be enough to get the boom and they're going to have to like protect around like the xerneas either goes down or they switch it out now to something like lecky um or incineral like they can stall this out but if they haven't got protect on really boom it's kind of done it's kind of done because once Rillaboom goes down, like between Serena, Kyogre and, and Amoongus, we should be all right kind of dealing with what's left. So we'll see. Yeah, Lecky coming in. Okay. Yeah, and this is actually great. So we actually get a little bit of a roll there and take the two things that are causing Kyogre all the issues down. The rain does end, which is a little bit unfortunate, but at the same time, it's not the worst because we can... I think just high jump kick, Incineroar, Water Spout. Um, it's likely that Xerneas protects here, but even if it doesn't, and even if it survives, and even if it goes for that Geomancy, we've got Amoongus in the back to come in, clear smog, and deal with it. But you see, we don't really need it. So very good game to my opponent. You know, it was a very tough one there, and I think they played amazingly well. So it just shows if you can kind of like just have that little bit of patience and just kind of clinch that board position that you need like that one turn where we got the u-turn there uh from the rillaboom it opened the door up for us and it was very difficult for my opponent to kind of come back from if the rillaboom had stayed in there makes things a lot more difficult for us because it's it's got the position at that point where we bring in the kyoga we're forced to switch in the serena probably not able to take down the Rillaboom from the health that it's at it gets very complicated but then again the Kyogre probably able to take an attack from at least one attack from the Rillaboom so 
Don't know, but it would have been very difficult. And just saying that is the place where it opened up for us. Anyway, friends, here is the team. As I say, once again, the pace is down in the description below. It's pretty standard outside of the Kyogre um, and maybe the Serena spread, but I think all in all, it's pretty standard. It's stuff that you'll probably be quite familiar with, um, but it's a nice team and it can do a lot of work in the format. And it's one I think I would strongly suggest having a go with if you haven't already, just to get your head around how this team plays and get your head around where the openings for this team are and how you can approach it if you're not playing this or even if you're playing the mirror against it, which would be a nightmare, but it'll get you familiar with how to beat this team, how this team can win. And that is the best way to kind of approaching how to kind of overcome these big archetypes. And one of the reasons why I've done uh, the videos like I've done this week so far on, on series 10, I don't want to jump in with guide videos and stuff like that. I want to jump in like at the point where I think it's very useful for you to kind of pick something up, try it out. And I honestly, I'm a big advocate of, you know, you can theory as much as you want, but I don't think you're going to get as much benefit as hands on kind of battling as you would do writing stuff down on paper or looking at a damage calculator. You need to jump in, you need to play on the ladder and get that experience. So hopefully it's helping you. Hopefully you found it entertaining. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's episode. If you have, please drop a comment down below. Let me know how you are feeling about series 10 in it going forward. Um, and I hope you're all enjoying it. Remember that we do have a big uh, friendly weekly tournament running this Friday. It'll be kicking off at 8 p.m. UTC plus one, which is UK time at the minute. Um, and it'll be running till 11 o'clock. So hopefully you can join. It's open to everyone. The um, the code is over on the community panel of the, the channel. So go check that out and uh, hopefully you can join in on Friday. It'll be a lot of fun. I'm going to try and play it and I'm going to try and stream as well. So it will be fun if a few of you can join in as well. So um, have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll catch you all for another episode very soon. So until then, friends, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.